Hey folks, welcome to this new series called Reading Papers with Harshit, where we simply grab a cup of tea or coffee, whatever you like, and I will walk you through the important details, concepts explained in research papers. So get your cup ready as today we're going to talk about the paper that was released by OpenAI last week called LLM Critics Help Catch LLM Bugs, where they released their new model called Critic GPT. Now, what is Critic GPT? Why is it important? What are the methods that they have followed? What are the kind of results that they have seen? We're going to talk about everything. So let's dive in. So Critic GPT represents a novel approach to enhancing the reliability of AI generated content. Now, this innovative model, which is part of the GPT-4 family, this is specifically designed to help human reviewers in detecting and critiquing errors in the code which is produced by ChatGPT. And here they have mentioned that on code containing naturally occurring LLM errors, the model written critiques are preferred over human critiques in 63% of cases. And here further you can see that human evaluation finds that models catch more bugs than human contractors which are paid for code reviews. So this has provided that method which basically solves this growing challenge of evaluating increasingly sophisticated AI outputs, particularly as large language models become more and more complex. So heading over to the introduction section, what makes the most capable AI systems effective today? We know that they are all trained with reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF. Now this method leverages the fact that evaluating AI output is usually faster and easier for humans than demonstrating the perfect output themselves. So as AI models become more and more advanced, now what is happening is even seasoned experts are struggling to reliably assess their outputs. Now this limitation of human evaluation is a fundamental issue with the RLHF. And the field of scalable oversight aims to solve this by training models to help humans evaluate AI output more effectively. And previous research has shown that methods like debate can help humans better assess answers to reading comprehension questions. But now it's time to assess these models in more realistic settings. So how can scalable oversight help humans assess model written solutions to real world tasks? And for the first time, the research demonstrates that scalable oversight can help humans more comprehensively assess these solutions, particularly in writing code. Now, the core idea over here is simple. They trained an autoregressive policy to take a question and answer pair and then output a text critique pointing out errors using RLHF on challenging real world data. So they developed a GPT-4 based critic model, which is called critic GPT, which outperforms humans at detecting bugs. Here you can see in this figure, they've shown that LLMs catch significantly more inserted bugs than humans and that model critiques are preferred over human critiques more than 80% of the time. And human machine teams basically combining humans with critic GPT, the model that they train, those combinations, this combination of humans and critic GPT, they write more comprehensive critiques and avoid the nitpicks and hallucination better than the models alone. The contribution of this research basically includes demonstrating a scalable oversight method for real world RLHF data, which showcases critic GPT's superior bug detection and critique preference, and then highlights the effectiveness of human machine teams and further you know, introduces uh, a technique called force sampling beam search, FSBS, to balance real and uh, spurious issues in uh, critiques, which we'll see in a bit. Now let's talk about the methods that have been incorporated in order to train this model. The LLM critics are basically autoregressive transformer models similar to your chat GPT. They take question answer pair as input and generate a text critique which highlights the potential problems. Now the critiques include comments attached to specific quotes from the answer. And to talk about the evaluation methods that they have, uh, the steps that they have taken. First of all, if we talk about the critique attributes, now the critiques include comments, contractors now 
are hired to evaluate these critiques based on comprehensiveness, inclusion of specific bugs, uh, which is CBI, presence of hallucinated bugs or nitpicks, and overall subjective helpfulness. And they rate them on a 1 to 7 scale, where 1 uh, being least helpful and 7 highlights the most uh, helpful comment or critique. Now, how are critiques compared and rated? Contractors compare four critiques of the same problem without knowing their sources and score them on various attributes, which we talked about. This comparison gives a clearer estimate of the model performance. The scores are then summarized using ELO scores, which estimate the win rate of one model's critique over another's. And confidence intervals uh, for these scores are provided using a non-parametric bootstrap method. Let's talk about the data distribution. How did they prepare the data for this model? Almost all training and evaluation data comes from the OpenAI RLHF pipeline consisting of question and answer pairs. And they focused on cases where the model's response was at least 50% Python by line count using the largest code block as the answer and discarding the rest. Now they worked uh, with two sets of data containing known bugs First, the human inserted bugs, where the contractors were paid to insert bugs into the answers. And second, the human detected bugs, where the programming tasks flagged by original raters in the chat GPT labeling pipeline. Now, human detected bugs are more natural and usually easier for humans to spot since they were already caught once. On the other hand, uh, inserted bugs are tougher uh, and more severe. All right. Now, the meaty part of this paper. How are LLM critics trained using RLHF? Now, the process follows a pipeline similar to ChatGPT. First, several critiques are sampled for each question and answer pair. Contractors then rate these critiques on various attributes, including overall quality. Now, a reward model is trained to predict these quality rankings. And a policy is optimized against this model using PPO. Now, finally, an inference time sampling strategy, which is called your FSBS or force sampling beam search, is applied. Now, additionally, there's an optional first step called tampering. Now, a large fraction of the data actually comes from this particular step. Here, the contractors introduce subtle bugs into the model written answers and explain the problems they introduced. Now, this adversarial approach makes the bugs harder to detect. And contractors also verify that an LLM critic misses these bugs at least once in three samples. And to validate, discriminators are trained to predict whether the code has been tampered with or not. Now, the tampering procedure provides the majority of training data, making it more similar to human inserted bugs than human detected bugs. Now, what is this force sampling beam search FSBS approach that they have introduced? And how have they used this? Now, in addition to RLHF, FSBS combines a reward model with the search to generate longer and more comprehensive critiques, reducing hallucinations and nitpicks. Because whenever you're, whenever these models are critiquing a long data, long code snippet, they tend to hallucinate and make up answers. So we can break down FSBS in three parts. First is the sampling. During critique generation, FSBS forces the model to produce highlighted sections of the input text that are quoted in the critique. Now, this is done through constrained sampling, where the model is encouraged to select text spans or code snippets that are likely to contain bugs or issues. Then we have beam search. Now, this model uses beam search to explore multiple candidate uh, critiques in parallel. And this allows it to generate longer, more comprehensive critiques by considering a wider range of possible highlighted sections and the comments that are written alongside. Then finally, we have the scoring model. Now, this is basically just a scoring function that balances two objectives. One is your RM score. The RM score is uh, the reward model, which indicates how well the critique uh, points out bugs or issues. And then the second parameter is length modifier. Uh, multiplied with number of highlights. So this is a length penalty that discourages the model from generating overly long critiques with excessive hallucination or nitpicks. So this FSBS model then basically provides a balance or you know manages the trade-off with the hallucinations and nitpicks. And this was a new 
method, a new approach that they have introduced in this paper. Now let's look at the kind of results that this whole process has produced. LLM critiques, especially those by Critic GPT, are often preferred over human critiques and they catch more inserted bugs. That's what they're claiming. And contractors significantly favor Critic GPT's critiques over those from prompted chat GPT and uh, human written critiques. The tamper plus the RLHF pipeline that uh, they have produced, this has improved the bug detection rate with LLM critics catching more bugs than human annotators. And when contractors didn't have LLM assistance, they made fewer comments, possibly due to the need for specific domain knowledge and difficulty of some tasks. Now, these factors explain why LLMs outperform human contractors. And additionally, critic GPT's uh, reinforcement learning training this enhances model performance across different scales. And they evaluated a family of GPT-4 models and found that increasing the model size improves bug detection. To match critic GPT's performance without extra data or modifying the chat GPT pipeline, uh, about 30 times more pre-training compute would be needed in order to achieve that. And critic GPT helps humans create more comprehensive critiques, especially in human plus critic GPT teams. It outperforms the chat GPT on both human detected and inserted bugs. While models have higher rates of nitpicks uh, and hallucinations, the human plus critic GPT combination, these, these teams, when they work together, they strike a balance. Now, while ChatGPT was trained with more data and compute, Critic GPT was tested with a similar setup for a fair comparison. And Critic GPT showed higher precision and recall on human detected bugs, proving more effective for code critique. Models without tamper data underperformed, likely due to lower agreement rates and a less effective reward model as well. LLM critics generalize beyond code. And yes, they can. Now, Critic GPT was tested on general assistant tasks from uh, chat GPT training data marked as flawless. Now, in 24% of cases, Critic GPT identified problems that lowered the rating significantly compared to only 6% without critiques. Now, using critique reward models to prioritize tasks also improved problem detection and reduced the hallucinations. So what's the key takeaway about large language models? It's that they have become so advanced that typical humans can't consistently evaluate their output without help. And this highlights the growing need for scalable oversight methods, whether RLHF remains the primary uh, post-training method or not, we must ensure that the model uh, outputs are trustworthy. So the approach here is straightforward, training models to help humans evaluate other models, and these LLM critics are already successful in catching bugs in real world data and even accessible models like ChatGPT uh, can significantly assist uh, these human annotators and contractors. As LLM intelligence uh, continues to improve, finding scalable methods to reward these uh, uh, right behaviors in AI systems is going to be crucial. And uh, LLM critics uh, show promise as a starting point. All right. Uh, so... Did you guys like it? If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments uh, what other variations or uh, you know details I should add. Uh, how can we make it more interactive? Would love your feedback uh, on the series. And uh, do tell me the kind of papers that we should read together. Uh, if you want to give suggestions, you can also join my Discord uh, community where we keep uh, sharing these sort of uh, resources. But yeah. That's it for this time. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, keep learning, keep building.